by Gazette Notice Number 11924, dated 30th September 2022. I notified members of the County Assembly that the official opening of the Third County Assembly of Garissa and the address of the newly constituted County Assembly by the Governor of Garissa, His Excellency Honorable Nadif Jama Adan, shall be held at the Assembly Chamber, Garissa County Assembly Buildings, Garissa Town, on fourth on Tuesday. 4th October 2022 at 2.30 p.m. This sitting is therefore properly convened. Honorable members, based on the above, I wish to guide the members and the assembly regarding today's session as follows. That the members shall be called to order and stand in silence whenever the, government, the governor enters or leaves the chamber. When, the, when delivering an address to the county assembly, the governor shall be heard in silence and the the address shall not be followed by any comment or question. Whenever the governor delivers an address, a member may as soon as practicable thereafter lay the address on the table of the county assembly following the reading of such address. I therefore direct that the governor's address be tabled on the floor of the assembly by Wednesday morning session. A member may give a notice of motion that the thanks of the county assembly be recorded for the exposition of public policy contained in the address of the governor. But debate on the motion shall not exceed four sitting days. I therefore, I further direct that a member of the assembly to give a notice of motion regarding the governor's address tomorrow, Wednesday, the 5th October 2022 in the morning session. Next order. Governor's address. <laughs> it is now my singular honor and privilege to invite His Excellency the Governor of Garissa to address this opening of the newly elected Third Assembly of Garissa County. Your Honor, welcome. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على أمور الدنيا والدين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد Honorable members this is my statement on the occasion of the official integration of the county assembly on this day Tuesday the 4th of October 2022 Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mr. Speaker, honorable members of the House, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me to be here today on the occasion of the opening of the first session of this August House for the year 2022. At the outset, and before I proceed further, I wish to take this opportunity to congratulate each of ourselves for attaining our different roles. Congrats to you, Mr. Speaker. Congrats our assembly nomina nominated MCAs. And congrats also to our elected MCAs. I commend the resolve of the elections body, IABC, to conduct what clearly were credible elections in the county and the, the country at large. I also wish to salute the National Government Administration and security officials of the county for their vigilance in ensuring peaceful elections. My appreciation also extends to all those who competed in the elections for their commitment to peace both during and after the electioneering period. But while on this point, Mr. Speaker, it's definitely a matter of concern that no women MCAs were elected by our people for this August House. Nevertheless, I must thank our political parties for ensuring gender parity by, and equity by abiding with the law and nominating the required number of women to the House. It is my hope that 
It is my hope that there will be, there will occur a change of mind soon in our society so that our women are given good ground for them to take full, full leadership resp responsibilities and roles in the society as appropriate. Mr. Speaker, I just want to say that I'm a firm believer of, of the fact that what a man can do, a woman can do better. Honorable members, as I have said elsewhere before, the revolution is arguably the most momentous reform initiative that has taken place in Kenya's post-independence history. This is because the revolution was premised on delivering a more equitable distribution of public resources in the first instance, as well as real development outcomes. Accordingly, and in line with the wishes of devolution, I wish to state that, I wish to state without fear of contradiction, that as the pioneer governor of this county during 2013-2017, we had laid down a strong foundation for the development of this great county. However, as I now return to office, and without saying much, it is a matter of common knowledge that our county is currently yearning for salvation. However, despite the heavy challenges that we are inheriting, I am confident that our county's best days are yet to come, and it is my sincere intention to give our country, our county, a momentous, fresh start. Mr. Speaker, I wish to lay down some few of the development aspects that I intend to undertake with my government. In the water sector, following our successes in the water sector in our first term, we will pursue appropriate interventions to continue providing water to our people, both in towns and in the rural parts of the county. Some key plans which we have put in place include the following. To ensure that water supply problems of Garissa Township are brought to an end, this will be achieved through the use of multiple intervention strategies, such as establishing new additional water intake points located in different strategic locations along the river. This will ease pressure on the old existing water intake infrastructure and will enable pumping and supply of water to the new periphery settlements of the town. We will undertake a new extensive piping in Garissa town to ensure water is supplied properly to as many households as possible. We will provide sufficient financial support to Gawasco to undertake holistic refurbishing of the equipment currently in use. Other activities planned for the water sector include the following. To construct a modern mega dam in Modogashe town to conserve rainwater. The water will then be treated and supplied to the town. To construct a modern mega dam in Huloko to conserve the rainwater, the water will then be treated and supplied to the town. To extend water to Ijara town through a pipeline for a Masalani water project. To complete the stalled water project of Danyere, which currently stands at about 85% complete. To complete the stalled water of Malamin, which currently stands at about 60% complete. With the recurrence of droughts, we will create a number of new boreholes in different parts of the county. This will be in addition to providing appropriate refurbishment and maintenance to all previous boreholes. As in point five above, we will excavate a number of new water ponds in different parts of the county in addition to rehabilitating and desilting the old water ponds. In the health sector, Mr. Speaker, during our first term, 2013-2017, Garissa Healthy Care sector was rated second to none in terms of performance and service delivery. This was as a result of impressive investments in HR, equipment, and infrastructure. Hence, for 2022-2027, we plan to undertake immediate development initiatives to bring back healthcare services to well above the, its earlier levels. The planned initiatives will, will cover all health facilities of the county, including Garrison Farrell Hospital. Specifically, Mr. Speaker, the following matters will be addressed as a matter of priority. Urgent strategic measures will be undertaken to reduce child mother mortality rates, which are currently amongst the highest in the country. 
Access to maternal health and reproductive health will be enhanced to be provided in all county facilities. We will renovate, refurbish all existing laboratories, maternity wards, dispensaries, the Garissa Mortuary Facility, theaters, x-ray centers, and create more of these in different parts of the county in accordance to existing needs. We will support the national government to achieve an early launch of the cancer center or the cancer center facility in Garissa. We will reactivate the county ambulance and referral system to well above the high levels that it attained earlier in 2013-17. This will be done by refurbishing the existing ambulances and equipment and also by acquiring new ones depending on need. We will implement a comprehensive e-health policy and strategy with the objective of enhancing the use of ICT in supporting health sector in supporting health sector transformation and service delivery. We will carry out a holistic assessment of HR matters of the health care department including matters of staff adequacy as well as welfare including trainings and promotions. In the education sector just as in 2013-17, we are fully conscious of the need to providing quality early childhood schooling to our young ones as well as technical training opportunities to our youth. Hence, we will provide all necessary support to these two functions of devolution, including the following interventions. ECD. We will revitalize existing ECD classrooms as appropriate to provide good learning environment for our children. In view of the growing demand, we will build new ECD classrooms in all parts of the county. In view of the growing demand, we will increase the number of ECD teachers in all parts of the county. We will provide free milk and meals for all our ECD children. We will aim to establish ECD centers in all county primary schools to enhance accessibility by shortening the distance learners have to walk or travel to an ECD center. We will ensure provision of safe, clean water, kitchens as well as furniture and toilets too suitable for our CD ECD children. In vocational training, honorable members, we will establish a special board comprised of professionals dedicated to enhancing the overall value proposition of the Garissa Vocational Training Center. We will undertake appropriate community sensitization campaigns to project to vet as a preferable and rewarding choice for our youth. We will undertake appropriate community sensitization campaigns to promote to vet education and the criticality of skills development as an imperative choice for our youth to get employed or employ themselves. We will enhance budgetary support for the Garissa Vocational Training Center, including providing appropriate modern equipment and laboratory workshop arrangements to support the specific knowledge and the skills required by the curriculum. We will work with the Vocational Training Center to revise, update, and to enrich its subject offerings to be relevant and in tune with the new demands of the labor market. We will work with the Training Center, i.e. the Vocational Training Center, to ensure that its quality of delivery is up to the standard and well respected. We will endeavor to make the Garissa Vocational Training Center a center of excellence for IT studies. In addition to the above, we will support educational activities in general through initiatives such as bursaries and scholarships. In agriculture, honorable members, as we did in our first term, we will give priority to food security as a critical goal and maintain an enhanced working relationship with the farming community with the aim of enabling good farm produce both in terms of quantity and quality. In addition to enhancing extension services, our various other support activities will include the free distribution of farm seedlings and inputs as well as water pumps for irrigation purposes. 
in livestock and pastoral economy. Livestock and, uh, livestock and livestock products simply contribute the biggest towards our economy in addition to generating good employment opportunities. Hence, we will pursue a proactive and holistic development plan for our livestock sector, such as carrying out enhanced extension of veterinary services to ensure good animal health. We also plan to reform the largely traditional pastoralist and subsistence sector into a vibrant, commercially oriented sector through targeted value chains and technology uptake. For instance, we plan to complete the construction of and operationalization of the Garissa Export Slaughterhouse for processing of livestock meat and meat products. Additionally, we plan to renovate and operationalize the Garissa Medium Tannery to process hides and skins as well as related products. In the road sector, my government of 2013-2017 did extremely well in this key sector. And for 2022-2027, for we plan to implement a robust strategy for the sector. Some of the key interventions planned include the following. We will rehabilitate and maintain existing but neglected county roads, drifts and culverts. We will open up all important rural roads. We will support our farmers along Tana River by opening up neglected farmland access roads. We will lobby the national government to hasten construction, construction of the A3 Garissa Liboy Road. We will work with the national government to change the Garissa Kismayu Road to dual carriage to ease congestion. Urban services, the various activities planned by my government under this new, under this sector include the following. We will under undertake complete refurbishment of the firefighting unit, including the proper equipping of the same and training and retraining of this manpower. We will undertake complete refurbishment of the garbage collection unit of Garissa Town, including the proper equipping of the same and training, retraining of its manpower. We will conduct comprehensive refurbishment of the sewage management system of Garissa Town with the objective of bringing it in tandem with the growth of the town. We will develop the Garissa Children Playground to a full-fledged recreation park, including modern amusement equipment. We will reactivate the functioning of sub-county administrations, including the upgrading of Masarani Town to a full-fledged municipality. We will create or we will work on the creation of dedicated stations and parking bays for public service vehicles, buses, and matatus. We will undertake, we plan to undertake the construction of Sogmugdi into a full-fledged modern market. We will undertake the construction of modern markets in all the main towns of the county, including a completion of the stalled markets that were initially started by ourselves in 2013-2017. Installation of solar-powered street lighting in all the main roads of Garissa Town. For women, PWDs and youth, during my tenure, 2013-2017, special attention was given to these sections of our community. And for 2022-27, we will fast track dedicated value programs that will ensure enhanced socio-economic empowerment of these sections of the community. For instance, we will ensure that they benefit from the 30% of the procurement values as set aside by the law for youth, women, and PWDs. Other plans that we have in place include the following. For women, we will ensure that our women are properly represented in county government employments, including senior government positions. We plan to create a women development fund to support women entrepreneurs by providing them with credit facilities and assisting them um, with their market produce. For PWDs, we will implement affirmative action programs to enable PWDs realize their full potential. Such programs will include giving preference to persons with disabilities in terms of employment. We will create a special fund 
to improve the livelihoods of persons with severe disabilities as well as reduce the negative impact of disabilities on households. We will work to ensure all institutionalized deaf children and those at risk are accounted, are accorded family-based care within an appropriate communication setting. For youth, all our programs as planned for this section of our community is targeted towards addressing unemployment in the county and also support entrepreneurship amongst our youth. Some key plans in this regard include the following. We will create a special fund for the benefit of all youth who may be able to present viable business proposals to start businesses. These will include youth who are venturing into the businesses of agricultural production, as well as those venturing into small-scale Juwakali businesses. We will provide wide avenues for the youth to acquire business skills. This will include workshops, seminars and vocational programs amongst others. We will have special graduate development programs dedicated to our graduate youth for their personal as well as career development, thereby enabling them to work and earn. Given the inclination of many of our youth to sports, we will undertake wide promotion of sporting activities as an avenue to empower younger people. Honorable members, another important aspect that my administration plans is to undertake a paradigm shift in Martha's drought management. As a result of the large number of casualties and heavy economic losses usually experienced in our county during major droughts, realization of meaningful development cannot be sustained for our people unless drought management activities are mainstreamed into our developmental plans. Accordingly, my plan for 2022-2027 is to adopt a paradigm shift of an institutional nature in matters of drought management by implementing major dry land farming activities or schemes in three different locations of our county. The three different locations are the Waso Plains or the Lorian Swamp of Lagdera sub-county, Gababa, the Gega area of Ujara sub-county, and Fafi Plains of Fafi sub-county. Our plan is that we'll have large chunks, large chunks of land will be secured in each of these three areas for purposes of undertaking large-scale dry land, rain-fed or irrigated farming initiatives. The projects will largely be undertaken on the basis of harvested drain water, while also underground borehole waters may be res resorted to where this is deemed economically possible. Each project will aim <coughs> to resettle about 1,000 drought-affected families who may be made vulnerable as a result of losing their livestock through droughts. <coughs> it's proposed that in each project, about two-thirds of the land will be used for growing of food crops and the other one-third for growing of livestock fodder. Through such intervention, honorable members, we believe that we will go a long way in dealing with the intermittent droughts that we face every other year. Matter security. It's a fact that without security, there cannot be any meaningful development since insecurity reverses any gains made in development. As your governor, one of my priorities is to ensure peace and security for the people of Garissa County, wherever they may be in the county. This includes the unnecessary inter-community skirmishes that, that have lately be become rampant, but also the endemic conflicts with some of our neighboring counties. Accordingly, my administration will support and work closely with the national government security apparatus to ensure round-the-clock security so that we can all be free to pursue our activities without fear. Honorable members, we have also put plans in place for the execution of other development pro programs such as tourism, sports, culture, etc. 
However, I cannot enumerate all my plans and robust development strategy in one speech. But as I stand here before you, I know all too well the huge responsibility that is upon me on, in terms of development. My governorship will vigorously seek to restore trust in leadership in our county and give our people hope once again that true leadership is about servant leadership. Hence, with profound, with profound gratitude and great humility, I wish to state that I am returning back to a, on a platform of tried and tested. <coughs> and this indeed is the beginning of a new dawn for our county. My destination is clear. I have a clear vision of where we need to be. <coughs> and I have the experience and the resolve to get us there. <coughs> I, I, I have the experience and the resolve to get us there. A vision of putting our county back on a positive track. Brothers and sisters, as I embark on my job as your governor, my administration looks forward to having a close, cordial working relationship with this house, particularly by attending holistically to matters important to the house, including the following. The welfare of the members. <coughs> specific development agendas for the wards in full collaboration with the MCAs. We will undertake and work closely with the MCS on matters capacity building and training as appropriate for the members. As I did before in 2013, 2017, I will encourage networking and benchmarking trips for the members as appropriate. Honorable members, all the above and many more is possible in an atmosphere of good working relationship, which I believe our two sides of the government will achieve. I will implement the system of devolved governance comprehensively from the county level to sub-counties to the wards and even, even villages <clears throat> so that our people can get the services they require close to them. <clears throat> my, governorship, <coughs> my governorship will be rooted in strong values, the values of justice, progress and community cohesion. My government will be a result-oriented, working government that will not protect and or tolerate corrupt officials. Above all, my governorship will strive to bring the people of this county together and to peacefully pursue only one agenda, development. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, I have no doubt that this House will be vigorous and objective in supporting our development agendas for the county. For instance, we will count on the support of this House to enact all legislation necessary for the smooth management of our socio-economic development requirements. Similarly, our planning framework reaffirms our government's commitment to coordinated planning in line with our manifesto, which will remain our reference document at all times. To this end, our government will soon present to this House the 2022-2023 supplementary budget to support implementation of priority programs. I urge this August House to support the budget. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, efforts to diversify our economy will be guided by the National Vision 2030, which focuses on the key areas of agriculture, infrastructure, manufacturing, tourism, science and technology. Our goal is to achieve higher and sustained economic growth in order to alleviate poverty through rural development and job creation. Mr. Speaker, as we seek the attainment of our development goals, we will remain committed to the practice of good governance in the conduct of all our affairs. As I conclude, we have all been given a five-year mandate 
to raise the standard of living of the people of our county. If we betray the confidence that the people have placed in us, history will judge us harshly. If we abuse the confidence of the public for short-term benefits, our legacy will also be irreparably harmed. I therefore reaffirm the pledges I made during the swearing-in ceremony that I will work to ensure the true spirit of devolution is achieved. With that, Mr. Speaker, it is now my honor to declare the third Garissa County Assembly officially open. Thank you all and thank you for your kind attention. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and may He subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our country and our county. Thank you. Next order. Adjournment. Adjournment. Honorable members, please be upstanding as the procession of the governor leaves the chamber. Your Excellency, the governor, honorable members, we have come to the conclusion of the business of the day and it is now time to adjourn the house. Honorable members, I wish to thank His Excellency, the, His Excellency the Governor for his address to the County Assembly and the County at large. Honorable members, you are requested to remain upstanding until the Governor's procession have left the chamber. Honorable members, the Assembly stands adjourned until Wednesday, the 5th October 2022 at 9 a.m.